When I first bought the pile, the kitchen was just gross. I saved money for four years till I had a $4,000 war chest. That meant cabinets, countertops, electrical plumbing, air handling, and appliances. Hi, and welcome to Yeti at Large. This is a channel focused on making the most out of what you have, no matter where you're at. Thanks for tuning in and helping out. Professional chef of 25 years with 51 projects under my belt, I have high expectations. Here's my design inspiration, this hickory style left-handed bass guitar. That's what everything was modeled after. So we got started with a $4,000 war chest, which may not sound like a lot, but if you're resourceful, creative, and can do a lot of work yourself, you can really get it done. I began by looking at all of the restores and secondhand stores for cabinetry, but couldn't find any. So I went ahead and stripped it all down, one piece at a time to really expose some of the flaws of this galley kitchen. I hate it when people tile over linoleum or don't tile all the way to the wall. Besides that, there were serious electrical issues, no air handling, and some plumbing issues that needed to be corrected. So once we had everything stripped down to the basic walls, I took a good look and realized I needed to redo that 60 amp dedicated double breaker service for the stove and I needed to move the outlets and the overhead exhaust fan wiring. When you dig into your sheetrock, you've got to go stud to stud. This little water hose for the ice maker was sticking up, but these things are prone to leaking, so it had to go. Once I started tearing into the walls, I was horrified to find how this 60 amp wire was floating loose, floating in banana chips and newspapers. How did those banana chips get in the wall? The worst part though was the newspaper was celebrating Mick Jagger's 50th birthday. So you know it's been in there for at least a century. Nothing but love Mick, start me up. Once we got all that cleaned out and the 60 amp wire was replaced and properly secured with a dedicated metal electrical outlet box, we could move forward. You can see I really had to gut everything to get the outlet boxes where they belonged and the wires properly run and secured. Once that was done, I could have faith the electrical was going to be safe. Went ahead and patched it all up and got a rough coat of mud on there and tape so I could start the air handling system. You break it down into bite-sized chunks, but you got to remember, this is the only kitchen I have, so without it, I'm cooking on hot plates and folding tables. While we had the kitchen taken apart, I went ahead and exposed the shower fixture to make sure it wasn't leaking. I'm not happy with this wiring install, but because everything is stable, I'll wait for the bathroom remodel to correct that and to get that wire away from a fitting. Here's the kitchen side where the sink goes. You can see right off the bat. So there's the start of the frame. It'll go all the way across in the front to be nice and clean. But in the back, I just need that small block in the center for support. And the floor is so bad that I've had to put shims to level it out. But I look like I'm not bad. Granted, my install method was a little unorthodox and I raised it up, but I got everything to fit real nice and snug, toenailed the cabinets together, confirmed the level front to back, and side to side, so we were ready to move forward. Got my cutouts for my sink and my cleanouts real tidy. And then I went ahead and went total bachelor style with tools on the kitchen table and an air hose running through the dog door. It is important though to clean up as you go. Cut the countertop to length and test fit it. And I wasn't happy, it was a little low. So I used some more of that cedar and brought it up three quarters of an inch to get it exactly where I wanted it. Not too high, but a little more comfortable for me to work on it. Once we had the countertops installed, I put the largest single compartment sink I could fit. I like it real deep to fill a stock pot or wash a turkey with the spray hose. Turning my attention back to the other side, I had everything buttoned up and so it was ready to start on the air handling system. I wanted a full exhaust hood that was ducting to the outside. I took my best guess based on what I had to work with and boom! right between the studs and the ceiling. So I got an exhaust hood that's pulling 400 CFM to the exterior. Very important. I realize I'm fitting the cabinets a bit out of order, but these two nine inch cabinets took weeks to show up. Very frustrating, but that's what you get when you order off standard sizes. 
I got a really good deal on these cabinets because they were an unpopular size and color. Altogether, uh, I think I got 10 pieces of cabinetry. There's just some samples of some of the finished pieces that I installed, and there's the finished kitchen. This countertop depth, tall, skinny refrigerator was half price because of that dent. I don't really care, and it doesn't bother me. I'm a little dented too. We love our little galley kitchen here at the pile. You've seen it featured in many of our videos, and I just wanted to do a quick walkthrough on how we did a brief remodel. Yeah, I would have loved to have done the tile floor and really reworked it all, but this entire project, including the gas to drive the 20 miles to town to pick up parts and components, came to $4,258. That included a couple of Snickers at the checkout line at the Home Depot.